Hey everyone, I've got an exciting video today that I'm really stoked to share with you. This video is the all-time greatest flips of my four-year reselling career. I went through and sorted out all those items that sold for higher amounts, and I can't wait to share them with you. Hopefully, through seeing these, you'll see tags, you'll see some brands, you'll see specific items, what they went for, and then I'll share the profit with you as well. This will give you an idea of those items that sell for great margin. And I don't just mean like great as in like $20. All of these items sold for more than $75 profit for me. One by one, I'll go through, I'll explain all the items that I picked up, what I paid for them, how much they sold for, what my profit was, and I'll try and find pictures to the best of my ability because let's be honest, some of these are three years old and those pictures don't exist anymore in my listing history. Each of these items sold for a specific amount, which is the gross sales, and then I'm gonna give you the profit. So in between those things, I've got cost of goods sold, I've got my eBay fees, promoted listing fees if I had them, and of course shipping fees. So when I tell you the profit, it's with all of those things taken out. My whole goal with this video is to show you items that you can find yourself as well. So if I got $100 profit on one item, there's a great chance that if you find that item, you can get that too. So let's go from one to 27. I'm gonna start with the lowest sales amount and work my way up to the highest. And a little teaser alert, the last item brought in almost as much money as the first 26 combined. So make sure to watch this video all the way through so that you can see what that item was. All right, without further ado, let's get started. This first item up was a Mitchell and Ness football jersey. It was a 1965 throwback Chicago Bears Gale Sayers jersey. Had the sewn on numbers, it was great condition. I picked it up for eight bucks and I flipped it for a hundred dollars. Now, if you can find jerseys like this, they're in really good condition that have some star players, you can definitely pocket money. Now be on the lookout for that Mitchell and Ness brand. I'll show you a tag here. They specialize in selling sports apparel for the sports enthusiast, and you can definitely find some jerseys and things that they make that are for Hall of Fame players that go for really good money. So for this jersey, my profit was $70.64. And I did say at the beginning of this video that all of them would be over 75, with the exception of this first one, that was the only one, but the rest of these are all over $75. On this next item, I don't pick up vintage t-shirts that often. It's a lot of time spent to try and find that home run, and this was one of those items. This last Christmas, while we were home with our family for the holidays, we had some time to kill. And I went to a thrift store and found this next item for $1. It was a vintage Slayer t-shirt from the 90s, and I flipped it for $100. Once you take out all the fees associated with this sale, I made $77.75. And let me just add with that, vintage t-shirts sell really well. Now you may have to do a lot of searching and digging through a lot of racks to find them, but once you find that shirt, it's a home run. I don't specialize in finding vintage t-shirts, so I haven't found that many, but I have found a few vintage t-shirts that have brought back some really decent money. All right, working my way out. This next item was found in a thrift store. It was a G3 Carl Banks New York Yankees Letterman's jacket. It had all of their World Series patches all over the sleeves. It was a great condition jacket, and I knew with the Yankees, there are a lot of fans out there that love to sport their gear. I picked this up for 10 bucks and I was pleasantly surprised by how much it went for. Honestly, in the store, I was thinking I would get $60, $70, but when I got home, I did some research and priced it higher. This sold at full price for $110.32. On a jacket that I paid $8 for, my profit was $80.12. Kohlhaan is another brand that sells well. Now I've stopped picking up a lot of their older shoes just because they are sitting longer in my store and I'm not getting as much money as I used to. But there are a few Cole Hans that still sell well. Cole Hans Zero Grand or Cole Hans Grand OS dress shoes can still get premium amounts of money. And this next item was a Cole Hans Zero Grand wingtip dress shoe pair. They were in almost new condition. A buyer came along and made an offer of $111 and I took it. Great sale on this one. So for that sale, I made $83.90 in profit. This next brand I haven't really picked up recently. This was an item that was new with tags that I picked up at the store. It was heavily discounted down because it had been sitting on the shelf for a while. And the brand is M. Julian Wilson. It was a leather jacket. Like I said, new with tags. I had this high and I priced it up there for a while. Wasn't getting any bites and then finally it sold. I paid $10 for it and after it took a while to sell, it finally eventually did sell for best offer of $119. So my profit on this was $82.41. Next up is a great brand that sells really well across the board, and especially if you can find this item. Now, boots sell really well. Now, Solomon boots especially are worth a lot of money. 
I remember picking this up at a thrift store one night after I came home from work. I had some time after work, so I stopped by just for like half an hour to go through this thrift store and found these Solomon boots. They were Solomon Quest Gore-Tex hiking boots. Gore-Tex just basically means that they're waterproof and they're breathable. And when you find something like that, they're definitely wanted in the outdoor community. So I picked these up, they're in excellent condition. They almost look brand new, honestly. I listed them for around that $150 range and they sold at a best offer of $125. So for some boots that I paid $8 for on a quick run on a thrift store after work, I made a profit of $87.26. This next item brings back really good memories. We used to live in Colorado. And on Fridays, that was my yard sale day. So on Fridays, I would get up at seven and I would go for four or five hours until lunch. I would hit up as many garage sales as I could and just enjoy the day, driving around in the sun with the mountains and talking to people. And if you're new to reselling, yard sales are a great way to make some good money, but also not have to invest a lot of money as you can find things for a few bucks. I stumbled on this yard sale a year or two ago and it was just the guy and his family. I was the only one there and I really couldn't look up the items that he had but I knew he had some really good ones. He was getting rid of his motorcycle and all of his gear. And he had a helmet and a jacket. The helmet and the jacket both had US Army logo and graphics on them, and they were in great condition. He was asking 50 for both, so I took them. Now I couldn't look it up because like I said, I was the only one there. I had this hunch that these would be good items just based on the quality. I mean, the jacket was really heavy. It was padded, it was ventilated. The helmet had a really awesome graphic on it and I'll show you a picture here. And so I thought, you know, worst case, I can get my 50 bucks back. If I have to flip these locally, I know I can at least break even. But I'm really glad I picked this up because I sold both of these for great money. And the first one I'll tell you about now and the second one will come later in the video. One of the two items was an Icon US Army helmet. And as mentioned before, it had a great graphic on the side and I knew that that graphic alone would sell the helmet. So for something like this, I didn't want to list it on eBay because I knew it was going to be heavy. It was going to cost a lot to ship. I wanted to try and see if I could find a local buyer first. That way I could do away with fees and shipping and just make the deal right there. I listed this piece for around that 150 to 175 range on Facebook. And within a few weeks of listing it, a buyer came along and offered me 125. Now that's a definite steal right there. As mentioned, I didn't have to pay shipping. I didn't have to pay eBay fees or any other fees. And once you sell something on Facebook, you're not going to get a return. So I knew that that was a great offer. I accepted it and away this helmet went. So on that $125 sale, since I didn't have any fees, $100 was profit. And with that said, don't be afraid to look up motorcycle gear, helmets, jackets, pants, anything like that can bring back some really good money because those things sell for a lot of money brand new. Next up is a pair of cycling gear. Those of you who have been watching my videos have probably seen me highlight different brands. And so I don't wanna go over all the brands because I've mentioned those in videos past but this specific brand, City, is a great one. And I've hardly ever found anything by it, but these shoes that I found went for great money. Now the brand, City, is S-I-D-I, and they're a premium shoe that, if they're in excellent condition, can sell for over $100. And since I'm going up for my last sale, I got more than $125 for these. These City cycling shoes went for $135. Now, when I was in the store, I didn't know that I would get that much. I honestly thought I would get 70 to 80. Got home, did some research, and found that I could list them for a lot higher, and then was pleasantly surprised when they sold for eventually 135. I paid $8 for these in the thrift store, and my profit after fees was $101.91. Besides just being in like excellent condition, I think the thing that really sold these shoes, and something that highlights like some of the newer cycling um, shoes, was the fact that they were the BOA lacing system. And most of the cycling shoes you're gonna see out there have the Velcro to close, but the BOA, you just turn the knob and it tightens, or you can push a button and it loosens for quick adjusting. So if you find something with the BOA lacing system, whether those are cycling shoes or golf shoes or even hiking boots, you know that those are gonna go for a little more money than just the standard lacing shoes. All right, next up, got another outdoor brand, another hiking boot for you, and the brand is Oslo. Now Oslo shoes sell really well doesn't matter what condition they're in. I've honestly sold them in a range from excellent, excellent, like almost new, to scuffed up, marked up, and worn. And they still get a high price. Now these shoes that I found had minimal signs of wear, 
and they were the Oslo Fugitive Hiking Boot. I paid $10 at the thrift store, and they eventually sold for $139.79. Oslo is a great brand, be on the lookout. All right, the next item up is the second item that I got at that yard sale with the motorcycle gear, and it was a US Army jacket that I referred to earlier. Now again, I paid $25 for it as well, and it ended up selling for $145. This item I did list on eBay because I knew I could. I had a box large enough to fit it, and I knew that there would be a buyer out there that would want it. So after fees, I made $92.63 profit. Let me just share a tip on motorcycle gear, specifically with jackets. One, you want to find some that are ventilated, meaning they get a little bit of a draft for warmer days for riders. Two, you want to find some that are heavily padded. People will pay up for those jackets that are heavily padded in the, like, in the unlikelihood that they do get an accident, they're protected. And three, if it has graphics of some sort, like some brand, on this one, the US Army was a great graphic that would connect with someone, but if it has a graphic, it sells well. So those are kind of some things you want to be on the lookout for when you're looking for motorcycle jackets, because you really can make good money. As is the case with a lot of these items that I'm showing you, don't be afraid to pay up a little bit in order to get larger amounts of money. I typically wouldn't spend $25 on an item in a thrift store, but if the item is right, I'll pick it up. This next item I can remember like it was yesterday. I walked into a Goodwill one day and there was the card of shoes that they were putting out as new inventory. And there was a pair of New Balance 996 shoes. They were blue with red trim and they looked brand new. They were $10 and I definitely threw those in the cart quick. I got home thinking I would make like a hundred bucks, but when I did some research, those shoes go for a lot more. So I listed them for $149.79 and that's what they sold for. So my profit on those shoes was a whopping $113.49. One item, $10 spent, $113 profit. This next item was a set of golf clubs. I found these at a yard sale. The brand is Nike, and these are the Nike Slingshot 4D irons. It was a complete set, and the woman was asking $50 for this set of golf clubs. I was able to talk her down to 40, but I knew that I could get a lot more than that selling them locally. Now this was the middle of summer when I knew that there would be golfers out there looking for clubs. So I listed these on Facebook Marketplace, and they sold for $150. Again, with a local sale, I don't pay any fees, so my profit was $110. Golf clubs are something that can return some really good money. If you find a set of irons or even some individual golf clubs that are within the last few years old. Now, if you're unsure of where to start with golf, you can find the brand and the model on the clubs, and that's exactly what I put into eBay. Even if I know I'm gonna sell it locally, I look on eBay, get an idea of what it sells for, and then that tells me whether it's worth it and I flip golf clubs all the time, really quickly, locally. Just to give you an idea of a few brands to be on the lookout for, Titleist, Callaway, TaylorMade, Ping, and lastly, Nike. Although Nike has stopped making clubs, you can still find some older models, but just know that they're not making new sets anymore. All right, next up, we're almost halfway through. This next item I found at a thrift store and I paid up for it $45. It's not an item I had ever picked up before, but I decided, what the heck, let's take a shot. So I picked it up, it needed some work, it definitely needed to be fixed up. It was a giant OC R3 6000 road bike. Like I said, it needed work, tires were flat, needed to be wiped down, it needed just a, a basic tune up, and I was planning on fixing it up to sell it. Now if I had fixed it up and sold it, I could have gotten 250 to 350. That was the goal, but at some point we decided to move and I knew I needed to get rid of it because we were just getting rid of stuff so that we can move out of state. And so I put it up on Facebook to get it going and hopefully generate a buyer before we left. Now the tires I could have aired out, but when I did that, they had a hole and it was not a quick fix. So I just listed it as is and still got really good money for a bike I paid $45 for selling as is. I had this around that 200, 250 range as you always price higher and come down. The buyer offered 150 and I took it. So without fees, I made $105 profit on this giant bike. If you're looking for bikes in particular, there are a few brands that stick out, and I would say four brands to be on the lookout for. Cannondale, Giant, Specialized, and Trek. Those are kind of the big four brands. If you, even if you can find some older style, and if you know anything about bikes and can fix it up, or tune it up, clean it up, wipe it down, you can still make really good money. In doing this research and pulling all of the higher priced items that I had sold over the last three or four years, there were some items that I had forgotten about, some items that had completely slipped my mind, and then 
once I was looking at my spreadsheet, remembered of higher priced items that had sold. And this shirt was one of those. I had completely forgotten that I sold this. I picked this up at a thrift store for eight bucks and it was a heavy outdoor shirt. I believe it was Polo Ralph Lauren and I think it even had a 1992 embroidered logo on the sleeve. But on the other sleeve, it had like a vintage uh, National Parks patch sewn on. And it was very unique. I couldn't really find anything like it. I think there were a couple out there, but I don't know if I had any sold comps to go off of. So I listed this really high because I knew with vintage Polo Ralph Lauren, you can get really great money on some of their items. So I listed it high and lo and behold, to my surprise, a buyer came around and bought it for a total of $159.83. Now I was out of my mind because I did not think that someone would pay that much, but you'd be surprised. Sometimes when you have that hunch in your stomach, you have that feeling of, I should look this up or maybe I should price this higher, go with it because I'm glad I did and didn't just price this at 50 bucks. I would have priced it at 50, I would have still thought that was a great sale and I would have missed out completely on the other $110 that I would have made. Make sure you're getting the value for the item that you have. So on this sale, I made $125.09 profit. All right, I told you that motorcycle jackets sell really well and this was another great sale. It was a Joe Rocket Corona motorcycle jacket, very similar to the US Army one. I paid $30 for it at a, at a Goodwill and I sold it within a week or two of listing it for $169.79. My profit on this jacket alone, $101.94. Item number 16 of the 27 I'm telling you about today. This was a fun one. I don't typically pick up video games and consoles. The lady was asking $30 for a Sega Genesis bundle. Had the console, two controllers, and 10 games. It was all in a box. I offered her 15. She declined. Said she would only take 30, so I took it. I hadn't really had any experience picking up consoles and video games. I know that there's money to be had, but at this point I just hadn't sold really any at all. So being a clothing seller, I decided to branch out and go ahead and give this a shot. I got home and at the time I was highlighting some of my items from this yard sale on Instagram and I took a picture of this and posted it. I wasn't expecting anything other than a few likes, but someone came back and said, hey, one of those games in that 10 bundle lot that you have is worth over $100. I'm really glad that I posted that on Instagram because without that, I would have lost out on that huge sale. I was gonna bundle it together and sell it all as one. The game was Sega Genesis Contra Hardcore. It had the box and I believe it had the manual. I did some research and in fact, this game was selling for about that 80 to $125 range. So I completely took that out of the bundle. I listed it separate and within a week of listing it, I took a best offer of $110 on one video game. That to me, is mind blowing, $110. Now some of you out there are saying, yeah, you can make money on video games. I just had no idea that you can make that kind of money on a video game that was used. So I more than got my money back on the whole bundle and I still had a system, two controllers and nine games left. So I threw that up on eBay and it took a while to sell. Surprisingly to me, I thought it would go faster, but I eventually got an offer for $60 and decided to take it because I had already made so much money on the game. So for that Sega Genesis bundle with the Contra Hardcore game, I made a total sales of $170. Once you subtract out fees and my original $30 investment, I made a total of $105.13. So thank you random Instagram commenter for letting me know about that game. <laughs> This next item brings a lot of joy to my face because it was my first big flip of my reselling career. This was when I was still part-time selling as a side hustle, a hobby. I was working full-time at my job and I would come home a couple nights a week and just go to the local thrift store that was literally down the street from my apartment. And I walked in and saw this jacket for eight bucks. It's a G3 Carl Banks Minnesota Vikings leather jacket. It was black and had like purple streaks and yellow streaks and it had the big logo and it had the big helmet on the back with the logo. This was another one of those items that I had no clue what I could get for it. But when I got home and did some sold comp research, I was blown away. This jacket was worth a lot more than I thought and I found a sale for 175. So I listed it at $175 and it sold for 175. My profit on this sale alone was $136.19. All right, next up, was a brand I don't find actually all that often. And the brand is Spider, S-P-Y-D-E-R. 
they specialize in outdoor gear, but more specifically like ski, uh, ski gear, outerwear, winter clothing. I found this jacket for $40. It was a women's ski jacket and it was new with tags. For me, $40 was a lot to put into an item at this specific time. I was still kind of new to the game and I wasn't sure how much I was gonna get back. But I took this home and glad that I did because this too went for $175. My profit on this jacket after the sale was $97.75. All right, this, ne this next item up, I've already somewhat talked about. It was a very similar golf set of clubs to the one that I mentioned before. These were Nike slingshots. They weren't the 4Ds, so they were a little older, but I still got great money for them. And these, I actually got better profit margin because I found them at a Goodwill. And at Goodwill, they were just marked $2 a club. So it was eight clubs in the set. I paid $16 total, listed them on Facebook, and within a month, they sold for $175. My profit on these golf irons was $149 because I had no fees. Item number 21. This was the first item I found that was a big home run here in Arkansas once we moved back. I picked up this Harley Davidson leather motorcycle vest for $30 at a thrift store. It was a 3XL, which is a great size, and it was in great condition. It didn't have any like good graphics on the back or the Harley logo or anything like that. It was just a standard black leather vest. I priced this at $179.81 and it sold full price. My profit margin on this was $119.78. Harley Davidson is a killer. If you know what to look for, their vests, their jackets, their leather pants, even their casual shirts and sweaters and things like that still sell well. And the larger the size, the better, especially with Harley. Men's, women's, it doesn't matter, it sells well. So all I'm trying to say with all of this is pick up Harley Davidson. I've got another pair of boots for you. These were vintage 1970s Red Wing boots. When I stumbled on them in the store, I didn't know they were Red Wing, but I almost just passed by them without looking. They were $20. They were kind of a little high for me to pay for boots, but man, I'm glad that I looked them up. These vintage Red Wing boots had a few scuffs around the rim, a few scratches here and there, but I brought them home, I polished them up, and then listed them on eBay. I had an exact sale to refer to. They had just sold for around just under $200. So I listed them and they sold. $179.81. My profit on these vintage 1970s Red Wing boots was $127.64. If I had to tell you about my favorite flip of my career, this would probably be it. This item was amazing. I, put, I paid a quarter for it. It was one of those days where I was out all morning going around yard sales around Denver. It was my last stop of the day. I was tired. I was debating whether I should just go home. But something in me said, just go, you're close to home, and then you can be done. I went and I scooped up quite a haul from this lady. She had a bunch of vintage pieces from some backpacks to some hats and shirts. But in a box for 25 cents was this hat that was absolutely beautiful. I picked it up because I thought it looked cool, but I had no idea how much money I would get for it. I didn't even look up comps. I figured 25 cents for a hat, I can at least flip this for 20 or $30 and make 15 or 20 profit. So I came home and I was ready to list it. I took the photos, I was drafting the listing, and I did some comp research. And at the exact time that I was listing, there was an auction going on with one hour left on this exact hat. Same color, everything. And it had 16 to 20 bids, and it was already up to 160 or $70 with one hour left to go. I was ecstatic. And I was thinking, I need to get this up now because all of the people that don't win that auction will have another option to buy. And I wasn't gonna list it as an auction, I was just gonna do a buy it now. So I listed it at $225. Within the first minute of hitting list, I got three offers. One guy was a low ball offer, the second guy was like half price, I think he was asking 100, and that third guy was around like the 125 to 130 range. Now I love getting multiple offers at the same time, because you can kind of play off one another. You can even tell people, hey, I have multiple offers on this. I will only entertain really good offers. And you can counter really well. So I countered all three of those offers at 210. A couple of them came back lower. And then finally a guy countered at 200 and I took it. $200 for a hat that I paid a quarter for. Couldn't believe it. I about jumped out of my shoes, but I'll take it. On an item that I paid 25 cents for, I made a profit of $164.95. Best flip of my career. 
All right, we've got five items left. Two of these last five I found on the same day, sitting next to each other on the same rack. This first one, I had never bought anything like it. It was Winnie the Pooh denim varsity jacket. It was embroidered on the back, had a huge, awesome graphic, but I just had never bought really any Winnie the Pooh items before in the past. But I had been watching videos and had other resellers tell me, be on the lookout for Winnie the Pooh for collectors because certain people will pick up stuff like this for great money. I looked up comps in the store and saw that this went from $150 to $250. So this was a no-brainer. I picked it up, $25, listed it, and it sold for full price. It took some time to sell, but once it did, I was very pleased with what I got. Total price was $249.79. And with that $25 invested, I made $174.05 profit. This next item was my most recent big flip. I stumbled on this jacket at Salvation Army. Now this particular store that I go to all the time doesn't usually have a lot of great items. But this was one that just keeps me going back because I sold this for $250. This was a Burberry wool trench coat. It was women's. I knew with winter coming up that this would sell. I priced it around that 325 to 350 range because I really had no idea how much to price it at. I didn't have any sold comps that looked like this. So I priced it higher and waited for an offer to come. So this person sent me an offer for 250 and I had to take it because it was close enough to what I was asking. And for something that I spent $10 on, I can't complain. I sold it for 250 and made a profit of $203.94. Burberry is not a common brand that I find that often, but I usually will pick it up when I do see it since it is so rare. All right, three from the end, and this is the second item next to the Winnie the Pooh jacket that was sitting on the rack next to one another. This was a North Face puffer jacket. It was $25, and I knew North Face puffer jackets go for quite a bit. You can also look for Patagonia as well, Arcturex. Those are great outdoor brands for jackets and outdoor gear. So I picked this jacket up, spent $25, got home, looked it up. I found some exact jackets that were selling for really great money, two to $300. So I priced this to sell for great money. I debated doing an auction because there was a lot of demand for this, but it didn't really need an auction. I sold it for $284.80. After paying $25 at the store, I got a profit of $205.95 on this flip. Now, these types of jackets, they're goose down filled, they're heavy, they keep people warm in the winter, and they're very desirable for, from a buyer's perspective. So something that I would put in the description would be like quilted or puffer jacket, down, goose down. Those are all descriptors that I would have used to help sell that jacket. I've got some other puffer jackets, some other down jackets in my store, and though they're not the same quality and they won't go for as much as that will, they still will get really good money. All right, these last two items were multiple quantities, meaning I went into the thrift store, I found several of the same thing, picked them up, and I'm gonna give you the total amount that these all went for. This first item up, I have to tell you the, little, the story behind it because I was at the store, there were 13 pairs of brand new jeans. These were women's jeans and the brand was Animo. I had never heard of these before. On top of that, they were all smaller sizes. These were a European style jean and they were in European sizes, but they translated to like zero, two, and four in women's. And I knew that was on the lower end and could take a while to sell. I actually called and got a hold of my wife and just asked her if she had any experience with this whatsoever because for 13 pairs, I knew I could make some really good money. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but they were all new with tags. Now for each one of these pairs, they were marked at 30 or $40, I don't remember, but they were discounted. And so the full price was $16 a piece. As I was in the store, I was debating and going back and forth. I had them sitting in my cart just in case I wanted them, but I couldn't really figure out, do I want to pull the trigger or not? I mean, I could buy one and test it out, but what if I get a lot of money for it, then I go back and the rest are gone. So in my mind, what I was thinking through is, I'm either gonna buy all of them or I'm gonna buy none of them. So I went ahead and bought all of them. I took a risk. I was like, you know what, let's do this. I mean, worst case, they're brand new jeans. I know I can sell them for 20 or $30 a piece. And I don't know if I said this, but in the store, there were no sold comps. There was like one buyer selling them for 70 or 80 a piece, but they had not sold any because I couldn't find any comps. So I took a risk. I purchased them, got them home and listed them all. And they did take a while to sell. Overall, probably a year to a year and a half to sell those 13 pairs of jeans. But once they started to sell, I got anywhere from $40 a piece all the way up to 75 was the most that I got for one pair. My total sales price for all 13 pairs was $652.50. That leaves me with a total profit of $285.81. So that was a great find for me. And honestly, every time I go to thrift stores, I'm always looking for items like that that are multiple quantities, new with tags or new in box that will just slowly sell off the shelves and always bring in a certain amount. All right guys, are you ready for this last number 27 of 27, my biggest flip of my career? Now remember, this is a multi-quantity item. 
I picked up 44 of these, but by the time they all sold, I got more money than almost all of the first 26 that I just told you about combined. Let me tell you what this item is. I just happened to go in one morning to a thrift store, Mile High Thrift in Denver, Colorado, for you Colorado folks. And I walked in and the first thing I saw were these books. As I mentioned before, there were 44 of them. They were all sealed in the wrap, brand new, and they were asking $8 a piece. I looked them up on Amazon because at the time, though I still have an Amazon account, I had been selling things on Amazon and I had some active listings. Though people didn't have any new ones online, they were selling them used for that $50 to $80 range and some people had them marked up to even like $150. So I definitely snatched all of these. I picked them up, quickly threw them in the cart and took them straight to the register, paid and put them in my car. All said and done, I paid a total of $320 to get this whole collection of brand new books. Now by this point, I'm sure you're wondering what is the book that I got? The book was titled The Time Chart of Biblical History and it was like a historical book for people who read the Bible. It had family charts and family trees and historical timelines and just a bunch of facts so that when you read the Bible, you can kind of understand the times and the people that were living in those times. So I picked them up took them home, listed them on Amazon, and just waited for them to sell. And actually, these started to sell really well. On average, I would sell one or two a week, and I would get sales from as low as $55 all the way up to 90. Once all 44 of these were sold, and it, again, it took probably a year to a year and a half to sell these, I made some really good money. All said and done for the total $320 that I spent on this bundle of books, I got $3,146.73 in sales, which results in a gross profit of $1,962.70. So those books were excellent for me in the year of 2018 and 19. They definitely brought in really good amounts of money every time one sold. And I just was so ecstatic that I found those. I couldn't believe it. Best flip of my career, maybe not the one that's the prettiest, but Anytime I can find flips like that, I will definitely pick them up. All right, so those are the 27 greatest flips of all time for me. Now remember that I am a, primarily a clothing seller and sometimes it's hard to find those home runs with clothing. They're not as likely as some other categories like electronics or um, video games or cell phones or things like that. So with clothing, it's harder to find that home run, but hopefully those were some pieces that will stick out to you and you will find yourself. So let me give you some totals now of all those 27 flips. Those 27 flips resulted in a gross sales total of $7,827.96, which resulted in a total profit of $5,061.23. So great sales in my book and glad to share it with you all. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video, this greatest all time reseller flips for me. It was a lot of fun to do. And as I said, it brought up memories of some of these great flips that I had forgotten about. If anything stuck out to you, please post it in the comments. If you have questions over anything I said, let me know and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks for checking out this video and sticking with me this long guys. And make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so that you get the latest videos, the how-tos, the tips, the bolos and what sold that I'm posting. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you and hope you have a great reseller week. Bye. <music>